one looks back with surprise at some of the decisions which actually had come so naturally. The first was our decision to be in the product business and not a solutions or services business. Even back then, we had the clarity that this meant being able to sell to people whom we will never know personally. In fact, every feature of the software would be used by my father and if he failed to use it without me prompting him, we would be back to the drawing board. Every choice of keys to be used for specific actions was dictated by this objective. It also meant designing for people to buy, install, use, upgrade and even remove the software without needing any help from us. The second was our decision on earning only from the license we had sold and not from any other effort we may have put in for the customer. In spite of being in difficult financial times, we knew that if we started milking one customer, we will not get to other potential customers. In fact, to the people who would be curious about why we did not charge money, my father would say, I do not need to earn more money from you, but earn from 50 of your friends. The third was a fanatic approach of either doing something really well or not doing it at all. For example, for several years, we did not build the capability for invoicing or inventory into tally. Nor, for example, did we provide for interest calculation. And when we did, it was done extremely well. Yet, two major pillars actually stand out behind our early success, which were the philosophy behind our sales and the style with which we sold. And both had Papaji's stamp on them. We were easily a high price product for those days. Not the highest, but in the high price range of products. So comparisons were common and negotiations a part of conversations. Not only were we high priced, we were consciously so, pricing ourselves as rupees 10,100, contrasted with a more common way of hiding the price, for example, at 9,900. Yet, if at all a customer made out a check for just rupees 10,000, he would not leave the table until the additional 100 had been paid. Not just him, every single salesperson or partner would do the same. The philosophy was very clear. Papaji would tell the customer that if my software does not benefit your business, your money cannot benefit my business. This one statement was the basis of our no questions asked money back guarantee and he would go to extremes to live up to it. One example which comes to mind is a letter we received from a gentleman from Indore. The letter started by the person apologizing for writing and stating that he is not clear why he is writing to us at all. He used to run a small business for which he had purchased tally some time ago and which burned down in a fire a couple of months earlier. Since then, he had not had the courage to start a business again and had joined someone else on salary. That is all the letter stated person sharing a moment of his life. The next day, we sent him a check for the amount he had paid for tally. It was no longer useful for his business, so his money could no longer be useful to us. Such was the simplicity of this philosophy, which is what embodies everything we capture in our purpose. Then of course was his style. He would never really give a demo of tally. Neither would he talk about it. He would simply make the prospect start using it by getting their cash book or sales register and start making entries. Even though most of them had never used a computer before. He would sit patiently while they fumbled their way through and in those brief moments would effectively prove everything he would have otherwise talked about. Mistake would happen and the person would have corrected them. They would have seen the magic of real-time accounting happen, the magic of drill down. Most importantly, that comfort of being able to use the product in today. He would only talk about that business and the basically disorganized behavior of businesses in general. This would be linked to the design philosophy of Tally, 
and how such a design would allow them to continue to focus on their business. I have never seen a person not buying from him and more importantly, not having fallen in love with the product because of him. Everyone came away feeling that this was made just for them and they would enthusiastically give more suggestions, several of which made their way into later versions of the product. Today, after 30 years, some of these pillars remain the core of the company. When I buy a car, I want to be a driver and not a mechanic. I want to run my business and not your software. Are you writing programs to make the life of the programmer easier or life of the user easier? And of course, if my software does not benefit your business, your money cannot benefit my business. Thank you.